going to start with uh, the API website first. Um, and then at the end, uh, I will, I'm open for questions. So this is uh, one of the two source inspector course, the other one being the fixed equipment. This is the rotating equipment. And uh, uh, this is about the fabrication and construction. So most of API courses are about uh, maintenance and operation like API 510, 570, 571, 577, uh, 653 and so forth. Uh, this is about construction and fabrication. So as a source inspector, you are actually representing the purchaser or the client. And your job is to ensure that um, uh, the equipment, the rotating equipment is actually manufactured and comply with whatever certification the purchase order or the data sheet defines. Uh, so you are the eyes and ears of the purchaser as a source, you verify all these activities, important activities that is set out in inspection test plan and the purchase order and all the relevant critical documents, data sheet, inspection data sheet and so forth. Okay, let's go to uh, this certification. So you click on certification on the API ICP and then you can go to API SIRE. And, uh, and then as you can see, uh, you can uh, attend this exam in person or remote pro proctory. Uh, so let's see how this happens. Uh, first, you re register, uh, you pay the fees. Uh, regarding uh, qualification, API accepts any uh, uh, experience in the oil and gas industry as uh, prerequisite. So it's not a hard and fast rule. Um, so once you register and uh, pay the fees, API would send you an email authorization and, uh, uh, and with a link to Prometric Test Center. Now Prometric is actually uh, subcontracted by API to hold the exam. So with that, you can either um, choose a slot within that window that you have selected. I'll talk about that window later on. What's that window? There is a three weeks window that you have to choose when you're registering at the time. Um, so Prometric, uh, you have to uh, choose a slot and a date within that three weeks window that has been assigned for the exam. Um, and then um, you can do it in person and you can do it pro uh, remote from the comfort of your home or your office. Uh, but the same security rule applies, like uh, they, uh, you have to keep your video and audio open. Um, there should be nothing on your table. You're not allowed to leave the room. Nobody's allowed to enter the room during the exam and they are hearing you and they are looking at you. Uh, so they are proctoring you during the whole process of the exam. So during, before the exam, they'll ask you some security questions uh, like your date of birth or your email address. Um, they will ask you to show your sleeves. There is nothing there. Uh, they'll ask you to turn around the, your laptop uh, so they see that there is nothing on the table. So that sort of thing, the same thing that you do in person. Okay, having said that, let's see what API, actually the very first page, there are very potential questions here. Firstly, your job is quality surveillance. So it's not QA alone, it's not QC alone, it's not inspection alone, it's, it's, it's a combination of all this. So, this could be a potential question is what is the role of an inspector? And that is quality surveillance. It's not quality assurance or quality control or inspection law. And your job is API has specifically said that to examine fabricated and manufactured equipment at suppliers facility and confirm that the suppliers quality management system is being utilized effectively. That means that what they actually claim to do, they are actually doing it. And from quality point of view, it's all uh, culminated in the quality plan of um, the, um, the package. So that, that quality plan is actually approved by the supplier, uh, by the uh, client, sorry. So let's go and see what is this uh, exam is about. There are 110 questions. Um, 10 of them are uh, non-scored. Uh, they call it pre-test questions, and you have to answer them within three hours, 15 minutes. So that means you have got roughly uh, one and a half minutes per question. Uh, I recommend that you uh, set aside some 15, 20 minutes 
to look at all these flagged off question and let you know what is this flagged off question is. The question you are in doubt, you can flag them off and look at them at the end and answer all of the question because there is no negative marking. So roughly you have to uh, answer 70% of question. So 70 scored questions should be answered correctly, roughly, because they use a scaled uh, um, method, but I don't want to confuse you with that, but it's, uh, they, they want to make it like the, the level of difficulty similar to all the exam that you do. So um, it's not a curved sort of thing. Uh, so let's see how uh, the publication effectivity sheet, that's a very, the, the most important thing that you should know. Uh, how is it designed? First, the API does a job analysis, what a source inspector rotating equipment should know. And based on that, uh, they list the documents that they should know about and can use them. Uh, the most important document here is guide for source inspection and quality surveillance of rotating equipment. So uh, this is the single most important documents that it is free and uh, uh, there is a link there in API ICP. You can download it and you can read it. Um, the others are like, as you see, there are 578, PMI, positive material identification or material verification program. And then you got the hold of um, 610 centrifugal pumps, 611 general purpose. Now, you don't need to read all of them. I mean, I would recommend that you concentrate on inspection part, which most of them are on section six. So you are actually reading them from inspection point of view. If you are an engineer, uh, be careful that uh, uh, don't, don't read too much into it. All you need to know, you know, the basic of it. And API, um, the questions that come during the exam are very basic. So you just need to know, uh, for example, how many test points are on a, there are five test points on a, uh, a rotating equipment when you do the performance test, for example. And then, uh, as you can see, there are, you should also know about section two, ASME materials, because uh, you, as an inspector, you're supposed to check the material certificates. Uh, you should know about uh, construction code for pressure vessel, ASME section eight. Um, and, uh, uh, and again, from inspection point of view, as you can see here, it's UC, USC 56, 57 and appendix seven, uh, examination of steel casting, and then is uh, section nine and all this, uh, but not very in depth. It's just, you should know what is a WPS, what's a PQR, what is essential parameters, non-essential parameters, and how do you validate the WPQ and that sort of thing. And then uh, uh, qualification for NDT personnel, SNTC 1A, how many levels of uh, NDT personnel we have? We have three levels, uh, one, two, three, and what are their duties and responsibility? That's it really very much. And then there would be two about the casting, um, uh, A703 and MSS SP55. And there wouldn't be any in-depth question from there. Um, and then lastly, it would be some SSPC. As you can see here, all you need to know is like, what is a uh, 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 power tool cleaning? And the, the, the answer could be SP3. So even these are the many question on this publication effectively sheet. Okay, let's go back. I want to quickly go through this and you see what is this in a study guide that you can download, I told you for free. So as you can see here, I'll just go to the headings and let you know what's going on. So you will have a definition abbreviation, the many questions from here and training and certification. And then you have source inspection management program. Now this one, not many people are familiar. And frankly, this is, I have, I've been working on over 30 years on many EPC projects. I probably have managed, um, I don't know, countless 500 packages, but I never heard about this. Uh, but from what we know is that what they call source inspection management program, this is actually practically the quality plan itself. So what they are going to say is that as a source inspector, there should be um, a document that says how you manage the package from source inspection point of view. But this is practically what is in the uh, uh, quality plan that the vendor prepares and the client approves, actually. So you fit in that puzzle, actually, eventually. And, uh, and then it says pro uh, project-specific source inspection planning activities. 
Uh, on many projects, you have seen notification of inspection and inspection test plan, and then you've got fabrication schedule. So all these three actually practically, uh, you put a date that where you are going to see, uh, as, uh, when are you are going to visit the supplier, and then as the notification comes, you do and do that. So you need to have some plan for yourself. And then source inspection performance from conduct and safety point of view, you never argue with the uh, vendor. Uh, if you have a disagreement with him, you will uh, inform the, your supervisor. Uh, and you put it in reports. You never put give your reports to the vendor. You always give it to the, your supervisor or to the client. And then you should know about examination methods and equipments, and this includes visual, non-destructive, destructive, leak testing, performance, functional testing, and equipment. Uh, disassembly normally happens when you do the performance test, and then you open the big compressor to see if there is, was any damage on impellers, rotors, and casing, and etc. Or any or was there any dimensional changes? And then the final acceptance, where uh, you tick all the boxes and. Uh, we use the term punch list uh, if there is any problem. Uh, and then, uh, so you walk through the equipment before releasing it and you issue the release note again to your supervisor and then make sure that actually it's been uh, packaged and uh, the documents, uh, the shipping documents uh, are included, what is agreed between uh, manufacturer or supplier vendor and the client. And then you review the final document that uh, many people call it manufacturer record book, manufacturer data book, et cetera. And also then you should know about manufacturing and fabrication processes, casting, forging, machining. And that's not again in depth, but you should be familiar with that because eventually you are representing client on a manufacturing environment. And then any metallurgy issues, there are some of them are mentioned there. Um, and then it talks about centrifugal and it talks about the rotating part of it centrifugal drivers, gears, etc. And as you can see here, they are formatted in a very rigid way. General information, design and construction standards, again, not very much in depth, uh, but you should be aware that uh, what is a data sheet, that sort of thing, material of construction, testing, this is where is very prominent what you do, and then final inspection. And as you go down, you can see that all of them, lube oil, reciprocating, refinery and all this, uh, they've got the same format here. Okay, let's go back and uh, let's talk about the schedule and fees. So this is how it works. Um, if, for example, you're planning to do a 16 August window, you can see here API side is in this window, July 16 to August 6. So the deadline was May 14. So the deadline has passed. So if you already applied for this date, be careful that you get the slot. So once you get the authorization, get a slot for, self, for yourself as soon as possible because uh, Prometric works on a first come first serve basis. So if you cannot find a, um, a slot in the test center, then you have to use another test center and fly maybe two, three hours away. And Prometric doesn't have many test centers, just to remind you. For example, in London, they have just one. In Amsterdam, they have one. Um, so they're not many. Uh, so what I suggest is that as soon as you get your authorization, you book a slot. If you fail to do so, it is actually as good as failing the exam because you have to reschedule and pay the fees the same way that you fail the exam. So this is very important that you take care of this uh, window. And I would suggest like three, four months in advance, you, would, uh, you apply and get your slot so uh, you don't lose it. Otherwise, either you have to forfeit and reschedule, which means as good as failing. And you have got uh, from the date that for your first exam, you got up to one year to pass the exam if you don't. So that means you can do four consecutive exam. Uh, if you don't, then you should apply all over again. If you don't pass within the four, uh, from your first attempt within a year. Uh, so the next one is, for example, here is uh, November 5th to, uh, to 26th of November, and the deadline is September 3. You can do before that, but that's the deadline, okay? So let's see what is what are the fees then. Okay, the fees is, <clears throat> if, if you come here, you can see that the fees is $315 for API member and $415 for non-API. 
Now, API does not give individual membership. So your company should be an API member. So most of the candidates end up paying $415 because very few companies are API member. And uh, for recertification, uh, so after three years, every three years, you have to recertify yourself uh, and you have a 90 days before that you can apply and up to 90 days grace period after your certificate is expired, but you get a fine for, for doing after your certification has expired and you end up paying $315. And if you fail the exam to reschedule, you pay $150 uh, for rescheduling. Either you couldn't attend the exam, you couldn't find the slot, you failed the exam for whatever reason. Okay. Uh, I think I covered it well enough. Um, if you have any question, I'm just going quickly through our program. Uh, we are, uh, I'm Ash, anyway, hello, from Inspection and Training Services, and this is our website, and we are, uh, as far as I'm aware, we are the only online uh, training company in API SIRE, an API SIRE. So we provide all these courses, and each course comes in two uh, models. One is the full course, and one is the mock exam package. So similarly, as you can see, we're doing 570, 653, 510, 580, 1169. And in API side, we have two sets of um, uh, packages. One is the full course and the mock exam package, which only contains flashcards, introductory video, and the, the mock exam questions. So let's go to this and find out what you get in return. So as you can see here, we have eight hours of video in this course, 21 sets of flashcards, 39 lessons, and 700 questions. And we give access 120 days, 24 seven course access and online support. And uh, so far all our candidates passed, but if you uh, didn't pass, which didn't happen to us so far, you have two options with us. You can either ask us for a full refund or we will, um, give you again four months access. It's entirely up to you. So this is 40 hours of study, 39 lessons, 700 practice and mock exam questions, 21 sets of flashcards, plus eight hours of video clips. Um, and we have, if you go to our curriculum, you can see that we have covered and the first uh, module is free for all. So you can look at our basic facts and benchmark quiz, try our benchmark quiz and go to, um, and you look at our, uh, which completely covers the publication effectivity sheet. We extensively covered it here. And we have uh, also set, uh, presented flashcards, which uh, uh, are potential exam questions. And we have uh, 750 mock exam questions for you here. Thank you for listening to me and goodbye. Mm -hmm.